back inside we've got the computer set up on the desk and I actually have an extension cable in here um, for the keyboard and mouse and I also have a thumb drive there so I've moved the files from her eMac right here hey Meadows what's up buddy to the system so I'm going to go grab my tripod and then we'll power on the system. So before we boot up, I thought what might be an interesting test. Uh, I've got my MacBook Pro 2008, which has a Core 2 Duo 2.4 gigahertz and it actually has six gigabytes of RAM and it does have an SSD that I installed. So since I'm thinking about putting an SSD into the iMac, I'd like to get some idea of what kind of performance improvement I would see. They do technically both have the same CPU. Um, the iMac has three gigabytes and it of course has a uh, standard hard drive. So I think what I'll do, I'm gonna power this unit down and we're gonna do a boot test of uh, both of them at the same time and just get some idea of what kind of speed we can expect. All right, so I did have uh, the iMac sleeping, so I'm going to go ahead and shut it down and shut down. And I wanna try and get both of these in here so that you can see them both. Oh, don't mind all the sound effects. All right, so we've got them both in here. Um, I'm gonna try and start my timer at the same time. Well, okay, it won't be the same time, but it'll be darn close. So let me bring up the stopwatch. I'm going to clear it. I think what I will do is hit the timer first, then hit the buttons, and I'll just assume two seconds for the buttons. So starting the timer. And three, two, one, blast off. So let's see who comes up first. So the MacBook Pro 2008 has an SSD. The iMac does not. And I expect the MacBook Pro to boot up quicker. I mean, it just stands to reason. But I want to know what kind of performance gains we're talking about. Because if it's all just about boot up, I'm really not concerned at all. Okay, MacBook is up at 36 seconds. So 36 seconds for the MacBook Pro 2008 Core 2 Duo 2.4 gigahertz. And 49 seconds, 49 and 36. So I'm gonna go ahead and log this in. So I would be looking at a savings of maybe, you know, 13 seconds of boot time. Honestly, I just don't see a reason to go ahead and put in a um, solid state in this iMac. It actually runs really well. So let's do something else. Let's find an app here. I've got Safari here and Safari here. And I'm going to stop this. Let me grab a pen and paper real quick. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna start Safari. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the timer and start it. 
and then I'll just keep an eye on the timer and watch which second um, I actually launch and then subtract the appropriate seconds. So we are ready. Now that's just amazing right there. Um, there was literally no difference and it took, what, two seconds all told. Um, one's got the SSD and the other has the solid, uh, a standard drive. The iMac has the standard drive. So I really can't see a point in making that change. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click Apple and just go to a website. Ah, uh, the difference really negligible. Um, I really don't see enough of a difference to be concerned about. What I would like to get, though, is that extra memory, because I know that's going to come in handy um, if I look at about this Mac. So I do have the 3 gigabytes in there, and I'm going to close the lid of the MacBook Pro down. And I'm going to move you guys in so you can see a little bit better. And I do apologize for the screen flicker. That's just the um, uh, camera on the Note 4 trying to correctly interpolate what it's seeing on the screen. So let's go ahead and go into the activity monitor. Everything is so snappy on this system. Uh, so with memory, and I don't know if you can see this very well. We'll move in a little bit more. Um, I'm very pleased with what I've got. I'm going to get that other two gigabyte stick, but Memory in use is 1 gigabyte straight out of the gate. It's caching with 1.14 gigabytes, and um, it's not using any swap. So I'm, I'm completely delighted with this system. What I do need to do is try to get Office set up on here. If I can't get Office, uh, I've got a version of 2008 that I'm trying to put on here, but I tried to put it on uh, my MacBook Pro, and it simply would not install. I don't know if it's too old or what but we're going to give it a try. All right, let's minimize this. And give the office installer a try. It said the same thing on my MacBook, so I'm thinking this version will not install on El Capitan for whatever reason. All right, continue. I uh, don't want you to access my contacts. Agree to the licensing terms. And give me a second to grab the product key. Okay, got the product key in. I'm hoping this will work. It says it recommends that I quit all my apps. The only one I have open is Safari. Well, I have Activity Monitor. I guess I'll close that one. And I'm going to continue the installation. Continue. And finally install. And of course it wants permission. Yeah, this is exactly what happened on the MacBook Pro. So maybe I'm going to have to grab a copy of 2011, but um, while I'm waiting, I know what I'm going to do. Uh, I put LibreOffice on my MacBook Pro, and I'm very happy with it. So I'm going to go ahead and find that as well, download it, and put it on here. Be right back. All right, so we are wrapping up the install, well, the download of LibreOffice. It just finished. So I'm going to go ahead and open the installer. I 
usually let it go through and do the verification. Um, I don't know how you feel about that, but I like to ensure that <laughs> the DMG file does verify. That way, if something does go wrong while you're doing the install, you can't say, well, is it because I didn't verify it? Or is there something else going wrong? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and drag LibreOffice into Applications. Less than a minute to do the install. As much as I would like to put an SSD in here, I just don't feel like it would really be of benefit. I mean, this system is snappy as it is. Uh, she wants it for word processing and surf the internet, uh, be able to go to YouTube. So I think this will work out awesome. All right. Let's just make sure it's actually installed. I know the first time it was run, or was that GIMP? I'm thinking of GIMP. Uh, the first time you run GIMP on a Mac, it, it churns for quite a while, um, setting up its files. So let's go ahead and run it. So it is going to do a verification. So LibreOffice also does take a few seconds on that first boot. Yes, even though this package is downloaded from the internet, I feel pretty confident it's okay to open. All right. So there's a basic writer document. And typical of Apple products, of course, we have a toolbar at the top with all our menu options. But I'm quite pleased. This system is very nice, very quick. Uh, everything seems to run just fine. So I'm going to call this one ready to go. And I'm sure my wife will enjoy it when she gets home. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.